What about when you feel competitive, when you feel like you need to compete for the narcissist attention or you feel competitive with yourself sort of to win over the narcissist? Does that make sense? Sort of the win over the toxic person. Are you experiencing something like this? And is this your reason why you can't let go of a toxic person? Are you struggling to not feel like you need to win? A lot of people can't gray rock because they have this strong feeling of needing to win, needing to feel heard, needing to feel like, like what they're saying is important or matters to the toxic person. I mean, what you're saying is important and it does matter, but it doesn't matter to the toxic person. And this becomes like a competitive thing for a lot of people. There are a lot of people I speak to who are very, what you might call A type people. They are high achievers. They are the type of people who set a goal and meet the goal. Uh, the opposite of slacking, right? They're always moving forward in their life and trying to achieve. And I have found that a lot of these people have done this out of like from having toxic parents who pushed them through telling them they weren't good enough, telling them they weren't worthy, telling them they didn't have what it takes. And so it's basically like an I'll show you attitude. But the thing is, it's kind of in this self-sabotaging toxic way towards oneself that if you don't achieve or if you don't get further in life or whatever it is, that you're somehow failing or you're somehow wrong or somehow bad. And so basically, have you made the narcissist the prize in your own head? Or, let me word that more correctly, has the narcissist created a situation knowing this about you, knowing your competitive edge and that, that drive to do better for yourself? Have they used that to twist things around so that they become the most valuable prize on earth? And how did they do that? Here's a couple ways in which I've seen them do it. I have seen the triangulation where they will bring in other people or other situations or really like anything to triangulate the, the dynamics. They bring in another woman or man and say, oh, this person's like really flirting with me or this person's my friend, just my friend, we're just friends. Basically always bringing that other person into the relationship. If you have this competitive edge, that can turn into jealousy or competition. Well, wait a minute, why are they giving them attention? Why are they getting the best of, the, of this toxic person? You know, see what I'm saying with a new supply or, or multiple supplies, they will do it that way. It's a really difficult one when you are a person that has this drive to win. A lot of people stay in because they just want to win. They want to win. They want the narcissist to know who they are, know what they did, say what they did, admit what they did, admit how they are, and somehow feel bad about it. But there's something in that that drives it forward that makes them stay in these relationships so that they can keep uh, sort of it's sort of like competing for the win. Another thing they do, a narcissist or a toxic person, is they basically tell you you're not going to get better than me. And so you're always working and striving to please them. You do this enough. And if you are a competitive person by nature, or if you are a driven person, or, you know, even or, or highly codependent, where you feel like that's the only worth you're going to have in life is if this person uh, loves you the way they should, right? then you're constantly trying to meet that expectation of them and you're, you're chasing this invisible carrot, really. So if you're struggling with this, what helps you? Does, does even just recognizing it help you? Can you recognize that this narcissistic person is not the prize, that no toxic person is the prize and that there is no getting them to take accountability? And frankly, it's not our business to make other people do that anyway. If someone isn't going to take accountability in their relationships, what are they worth in a relationship? Not much. That's not you. That is not your problem. You can't force someone or, or control a situation to where someone will take accountability when they're a person who refuses to, right? And if you're chasing that goal, it might be time to see it for what it is and realize narcissistic people don't do that. If they do, it's a Hoover. 
It's to bait you in and then they will do the same thing over and over again. And these are cyclical relationships that just keep following toxic cycles and toxic patterns. And there is no prize at the end of it. There really isn't. I think a lot of people that I talk to who have this struggle in them, talking it through and really undoing that logic, sort of unlearning this behavior and seeing where this need to succeed, this need to achieve actually came from. So if you need coaching or are interested in group coaching or peer support, check out the information in the main description of each video. Especially if you are stuck in toxic relationships, it comes from something in your past where you were trying to achieve in order to receive love. And in a way that is pretty toxic for a child to have to grow up with. So there's a lot of unlearning and a lot of relearning to do for yourself so that you can see you don't need to be chasing these things and that you can take that amazing skill you have for achievement and place it in better areas of your life so that you are getting fulfilled from the experience of achievement. All right, if you have anything more about this or more questions about this, or if you have experienced this or are going through it, let me know in the comments and we'll talk. You guys have a good one. Take care. See you next time.